the last portion of um, uh, lecture one, I will show you um, the tools that we're really going to use, the introduction to the deep networks really simple, and a couple of examples that might make you excited about the course and what you really can do with it. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk very often in this course about deep networks and deep learning. Um, that's a very fascinating uh, new topic of uh, research that has been developing over the years. Uh, in particular, again, um, names that come into mind that are really great researchers in the area are Andrew Wang, uh, Jan Lecon, uh, Joshua Benjo, and uh, Jeffrey Hinton. Um, all of these people really contributed to the field and uh, here in this course we're just taking a lot of their tools and trying to combine them together and, uh, and using some of their findings. Um, the one of the main uh, components of a deep network, you know, this slide might be seem quite complicated, but don't worry, we're going to go through every single one of these components in um, one of the next forthcoming lectures about convolutional neural networks and deep networks. What I wanted to show you is that uh, these are uh, multi-layer mo models, basically, different layers of uh, the visual system, human visual system or any visual system. Uh, there are powerful uh, machine learning and statistical tools that al allow you to um, uh, really model categorization or it's a very simple task that the, um, the visual system might be able to do. Um, so all of these layers are basically um, a collection of neurons and connections from, uh, from the input to the output. So you're going to have an input image or a couple of images if you have a stereo camera or, uh, or, main or a few frames if you're looking for a movie or a few stereo frames if you're looking for a movie with a stereo. Now ideally we want to go there. Um, you're going to compute some kind of operation on one layer um, by feeding the input to all the appropriate modules. Um, you're going to also take appropriate modules and combine them together and feed them to a second layer and maybe a third and so forth. Um, eventually, we use a classifier, uh, which could be a support vector machine, but uh, remember, in this course, we are very loyal to um, neural network, so we'll mostly use classifier as multi-layer layer perceptron or radial basis function or things uh, of the sort. And we'll be able to say something about the input image. And each one of these layers is composed by different operations, such as convolutions, and mathematical operation or correlations. We will subsample, we will use some nonlinearity and so forth. So this is really the main model that we're going to use uh, in this course. and. Um, I really recommend you to look at other online courses as well, like Henry Wang um, the course on uh, machine learning and also Geoffrey Hinton course on machine learning. They will really set the foundation for, um, for this kind of machine and explain them in, in details. We will also explain them in details in this course, but it's also very, very important and great if you can listen to really the people that contributed the most in the past to create these visual models and have a second opinion, a third opinion if possible. We'll show you now uh, a few examples of what you can do uh, with this neural network. So, uh, for example, uh, you know, you might be looking for different kind of uh, objects, different kind of things. So pedestrians, you might want to see how pedestrians are moving. Um, you might want to recognize cars, you might rec want to recognize bicycle. You can see uh, this kind of network does a pretty good job not only recognizing like frame by frame, this there's no temporal content whatsoever, uh, different kind of things. Another great example that I, that I can show you is uh, this network that was trained um, recently um, by the NYU folks. Jan Lecon and Clement Farabe at NYU. This is like a network that uh, can recognize 50 categories uh, of objects. And you can see he made some mistakes. But really, this is the state of the art right now. And it would run a lot slower if you didn't have 
the, the kind of proper hardware. This is actually four cameras stitched together by Marcus Coffier, a video taken by Marcus Coffier while he was uh, riding on the bicycle. It's a great example of what you can do nowadays. This is really what you can think of it as being the state of the art uh, computer vision system nowadays. Well, in this course, we will also uh, introduce hardware systems. So once we identify the right algorithm, we can talk about what kind of hardware can we use to accelerate um, the execution of this neural network and this um, in different um, special hardware. Um, and in our group, together with the group of Yann Lecun and Clement Farabe, we really created a system um, that it's the size of you know a few couple of cell phones maybe and that um, has the processing power of a large GPU and CPU so of a large big computing box for a tenth of the power um, you're welcome to go and look at this website for like really updated information about the system and where we are uh, and um, without this system a video like the one you've seen before a video like this one would only run at uh, one frame or half a frame per second. Um, but with this, uh, with this uh, system that we created, you are able to, to run it at a frame rate. Um, we will introduce what's inside this, uh, this special architecture. This is a special architecture that is quite different from the computer I'm using to present this video because um, it um, uses a data flow architecture where data is constantly flowing, get operated upon at every clock cycle, there's no flow control and such. Um, and the idea is really to have multiple processing elements, so here it's a 3x3 three three processing tile, PT, um, that are connected to a 64-bit CPU or a, a central CPU and a smart uh, DMA, a smart uh, memory interface that can feed the data to all of these guys. Uh, we, will we will talk about all of this uh, in, in the course and I hope I can make you interested about not only algorithms but also uh, their application in hardware system. Uh, one of the main advantages of thinking about hardware is that it will force you to limit and think about very deeply about exactly what kind of tools and algorithms you want you want to use. It's very hard to in hardware to it's time consuming most more, more than hard really to replicate any kind of algorithms. Hardware has the interesting um, pr uh, capability of replicating the parallelism that we also have in the brain up to a certain point. So it will make you think about parallelism as well. Um, and all, all of these things. So we will uh, look at hardware system at more, more at the end of the course. <laughs>